Welcome to this farm walk at the, on suckler and soil fertility on the farm of Thomas Moorhead in Brashain in County Antrim. In today's farm walk, uh, jointly organised by AgriSearch, AFRI and CAFRI, we'll be featuring a variety of topics including synchronisation of suckler cows, calving your heifers down at two years of age, grassland management. Also today, uh, topics will be soil management, managing your soils in terms of your nutritional management, to optimise your grass growth, to reduce your costs for your suckler cows. The aim of these farm walks is to help put science into practice so that you can get a return on the levy money you put, which we then apply to various parts of research. Um, feed it back to you today at these farm walks to lower costs, improve efficiency and hopefully increase profits on your farm business. Well, today we've been talking um, largely about the increasing of production of grass from suckler herds and we've been talking um, about heifer rearing and um, early calving of um, heifers. At several of the stops we've touched upon the important um, health implications within um, suckler herds, vaccination programs, worming programs, but also the control of specific diseases such as BVD, leptospirosis, um, and a little on Yoni's disease as well. And it's very important to bear in mind that as well as um, their effects in nearly all directions, diseases such as BVD also have direct effects um, on fertility in terms of early embryonic loss, for example, or abortion, for example, um, and the production of persistently infected cows. And that a proper BVD control program um, is essential um, within all suckler herds. And the recent Animal Health and Welfare Northern Ireland um, initiatives and the BVD um, eradication um, program in Northern Ireland is very, is, is very important um, in reducing the level, level of that disease. We also talked a little bit about leptospirosis and the importance of control of leptospirosis and the usefulness of vaccination in the um, control of, of, of that disease. We talked a little bit as well um, about the importance of trace elements such as copper, cobalt, selenium and iodine um, in, um, dairy, in, in suckler herd um, fertility, um, talking particularly about the important relationship between selenium and vitamin E and the um, necessity for colostrum to transfer selenium, especially vitamin E, from the dam to the calf and the important effects that has on um, survival of, of, of the young calves and also the effects um, of um, iodine deficiency in, in herds, um, maybe by showing a reduced bullying um, or reduced viability of, of, of very young calves and supplementation methods that, um, that um, can be undertaken. And it's very important to keep in mind that when we are using synchronization programs and similar um, or other uh, means of increasing production, synchronizing calving or whatever, the um, health status of the heifers um, that are used in those programs is of um, paramount importance. Uh, we've undertaken quite a bit of research on farm with, uh, with farmers such as uh, Tom Murhead, just really to look at the benefits of calving at 24 months and how you successfully calve at 24 months and really monitoring the animal performance in terms of monitoring the growth, monitoring their life and condition from uh, about weaning or six months of age right up through to uh, meeting at 14 months of age being critical to ensure it's a successful process. Uh, more recently we've undertaken a synchronisation study uh, looking at synchronisation heifer, uh, beef heifers. Uh, within this we looked at various protocols, really uh, one looking at fixed time AI and one looking at heat detection and looking at the benefit of uh, using uh, 80, 80 Kevin sires on, uh, through a synchronisation programme. By and large, the programme worked very well with uh, about 60% conception to first service in what is a uh, little bit low but not uh, a typical of a synchronisation programme. Following on from that, there are, uh, we, we do hope to look at synchronisation in the future and couple it with uh, more, more novel breeding techniques such, such as XX, semen, etc. But by and large, the farmers were very happy with the, with the project. Uh, the synchronisation study it did improve the calving interval of their second second calvers, so it was it was overall a, a good success. Uh, Thomas Murhead here, and we had a farm walk today on the farm, and it was just sort of going through all the um, the the different aspects of production, trying to get cows and calves, 
all the protocols necessary. Uh, on this farm we keep about 130 sucking cows and the whole aim is to try and produce as much as possible of grass. We finish almost everything and um, the aim is to try and, and make as much money as possible of uh, our limited resources. Inputs are getting very expensive and scarce and ha everything has to be managed as efficiently as possible and that will be the aim on Take this farm. On this farm we keep roughly 130 certain cows. We would keep most of the bull calves entire. The bull calves that are born early spring are kept entire. The ones that are born later on in the year um, are castrated because bulls have to be away before they're 14 months and they don't like putting bulls away in the middle of the summer time out of a house. We would um, also keep 200 or so ewes. Half of them early lambing, the other half later on. And the aim of the early lambing flock is to spread the workload and to improve the cash flow. The later lambing ewes would be more productive, have more lambs per ewe. Even though the price is less, you probably end up more profit per ewe. On the cattle front, the, um, the male cattle tend to go to the factory uh, as bulls. The females go to a local butcher. We'd also keep a few Angus. The main breed used would be Charlie and Semental. Uh, Charlie is terminal sire. Semental for rear and replacements. We also keep an Angus bull for heifers. The Angus calves go into an Angus scheme attracting roughly a 20p premium, ending up being as profitable as either the Semental or the Charlie. The, um, the Angus calves grow well in bad weather. They are not as dependent on meal. They can be finished with much less uh, concentrates. And if the weather turns rough, they'll still thrive away, whereas your continental animals, they, they tend to be not doing so well in rough weather.